Hi right, guys. It is a beautiful, it is not quite an over the top, spectacularly gorgeous day in the end times, but it is a beautiful September morning here in the end times in paradise at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Where are we? Friday, September 6th, 2024. And, uh, <clears throat> I am procrastinating <clears throat> getting up out of this comfortable chair, uh, drinking my morning cup of Save the Planet organic coffee to actually go to work today. So while I'm having my morning coffee, I'm just going to sit here and debase myself and, uh, insult my own intelligence by talking uh, w w wasting my breath on the single obviously the single biggest distraction on the planet at least for two more months and that of course is this absolutely irrelevant do they call this an election uh 2024 does are they still using that word doesn't the word election apply that we have some sort of choice but anyway uh i'm gonna want to mainly i'm gonna be talking about chris hedges views on this distraction here in a minute but i want to segue into that so you know last week my uh my best friend in, in the world was here visiting you know my college educated intelligent aware friend who has voted for donald trump twice and is getting ready to uh vote for him a third time was pulling out this absolute hilarious knee slapper that Kamala Harris, like Joe Biden, were some kind of somewhere between a socialist and a communist. Uh, and, and I just uh, laughed and, you know, and I said, well, obviously, darling, one of us does not understand the definition <coughs> of a socialist or a communist and and, and i admit guys uh, i i really don't understand what the difference is between a socialist and a communist any more uh than my than my friend does and certain but i think i have a little more clarity than anyone uh who would claim that joe biden or kamala harris is either a a uh socialist or a communist and uh so you know someone from europe in a comment to one of my rants was was pointing out that only in america would they cons would anybody consider what the democratic party has become to be left to be lefty on any level, uh, the it, it, that only in America, and uh, I I responded to them, you know, that uh, anybody who thinks uh, that or that Kamala Harris or Joe Biden is either a socialist or a communist, it, it, you know, that, that that Kamala and Joe are about are, are lefties about as much as Sancho Panza is a pit bull. And right after I made that comment, it came to me, what I should have said was that anybody calling Kamala Harris or Joe Biden a socialist or a communist has just insulted socialist and communist the the insult is is, to, is on them there is no socialist or communist communist on this planet who would claim that kamala harris uh represents their view and so the the very next day i open up uh, you know for some reason i am subscribed to caitlin johnstone 
I must um, that little uh, lefty Caitlin Johnstone, who I assume, although I don't know, identifies as a socialist. So yesterday morning, I open up her rant, and it's titled something like to call. Kamala Harris, a communist, is an insult to communist. Uh, and uh, so I enjoyed reading that article from Caitlin. That was yesterday morning. Then last night, <coughs> somehow, uh, I don't know how, I just went over to Vegematic's channel and off to the right. Of, of his little short rant, uh, the, the YouTube algorithm steered me to a, the avowed socialist uh, Chris Hedges. Uh, basically, his comments on the 2024 election. And it was not surprisingly, he was being interviewed by a guy from the Middle East who lives in England. Uh, certainly not, that Chris Hedges was sure as shit not being interviewed by anybody, uh, any American journalist. So uh, this interview was over an hour. And so, you know, I, I did want to, uh, obviously, I wanted to hear what Chris Hedges, uh, what his opinions of the election were, but I also just wanted to, to see if I was understanding the election of 2024 correctly. And, you know, I admit uh, I spend almost no time uh, studying this election, and I figured so. Chris Hedges knows a hell of a lot more about it than uh, th than I ever will. The the brilliant political analyst and avowed socialist, uh, anti-capitalist Chris Hedges, uh, obviously knows a shitload more uh, about this election and the political process and the American Empire and all the rest of it. Uh, than this dumb uh, hippie redneck ever will. So I just wanted to see if I uh, if I understood it correctly. And after listening to Chris Hedges go on for over an hour uh, d describing what is unfolding, or shall we, I guess, more correctly not unfolding in the year 2024 I I did pretty damn good uh, what uh, how I have uh, how I have been uh, calling this election so I'm just kind of gonna d just do a recap of what Chris said I'm gonna put the link on here to this YouTube video <coughs> And you should listen to this yourself uh, if, if there's any confusion, if you have any confusion that it makes one iota of difference to the, the spiraling down, the, the ongoing and increasing collapse of this planet. If, if you're still suffering some delusion uh, that either one uh, of these, quote, candidates uh, are, are going to do a goddamn thing to stop that, you need to listen <coughs> to Chris shut me up and just go listen to Chris Hedges. <coughs> but I, I would say the overall <coughs> takeaway <coughs> from Chris Hedges uh, view of the election of 2024, he agrees uh, with Hamon Littletail that it is absolutely irrelevant to what is going on on this planet. Irrelevant to it. Uh, it, it, it is nothing but a distraction. Uh, it means absolutely nothing on any level <coughs> Uh, well, maybe at the very end, 
Uh, he threw in some stuff about the absolute <clears throat> horror uh, of Donald Trump getting back in. But for all intents and purposes, you know, on a uh, on a macro level, what what is going on on this planet on every level, uh, it, it, it's completely irrelevant. Whether Donald Trump or Kamala Harris are uh, are, are elected, uh, that it's just uh, you, you know he he said is. Uh, you know, the, the quote, global elites, the oligarchy, what he calls the corporate class, and I'm sorry, the donor class, the donor class, you know, these big political donors who are the only people that uh, Donald Trump or Kamala Harris listen to are the people with the money. And uh, uh, it, it was just like, as he was saying, to the donor class, the, the, the people who really count in the elections, the, the one ponying up the cash, uh, they would probably, by and large, prefer, uh, I mean, e Elon Musk is an outlier, but by and large, the donor class would prefer to have that uh, little corporate whore, Kamala Harris, in, in the White House <clears throat> than Donald Trump. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you're one of those guys, uh, it's kind of like uh, the choice, I don't know, between French vanilla and what is it, American vanilla ice cream scoop on top of your apple pie, that, that most of these people in the donor class would probably prefer to have French vanilla ice cream on top of their slice of apple pie. But if, but, but if they're served just regular, uh, uh, regular vanilla, uh, they'll, they're okay with it. Uh, that's about the level of difference uh, it, it, as far as the people who run this country and this planet are concerned, it's the difference between French vanilla and regular vanilla ice cream. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they don't care. And what Chris was saying, <clears throat> you know, about the, <coughs> the reason that Joe Biden uh, dropped out of the race, uh, you know, goes, it's quite clear, well, well, well of course, he, he, he just said, you know, like anybody with one half of a brain uh, has known for a long time that Joe Biden is a, you know, a just a senile uh, old fart that the guy is, he didn't use the word Alzheimer's, but, but he is clearly uh, a demented, senile old fart who had no business, zero business, uh, running uh, for president. And, and after that debate performance, it was uh, who it was <clears throat> who decided, uh, not surprisingly, who it was who decided that Kamala was going to run and not Joe was the donor class, that they were just not going to give one more penny to that loser, and they would just uh, just take... Uh, the lesser of vanilla ice creams uh, on their apple pie and, and just let uh, Donald Trump sweep back in and, 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 and deal with that. And uh, the only reason that Kamala Harris <coughs> was put up there was for that reason. Uh, pull, pull your head out of your ass. 
And I, I, yeah, I do need to say that this interview, it was, it's about six weeks old now. So uh, you, you have to factor in that I think it was right, it was, it was after, you know, Donald Trump had the little martyr attempted assassination bump he was writing, and I think it might have been right after the Republic National Convention. Uh, so Kamala was, you know, a, a new player in the game. And it was before the Democratic National Convention. It was before uh, the vice presidents had uh, had been named. It was before RFK dropped out. So th this was his view from about six weeks ago. And it might have changed. But six weeks ago, he was giving the election to Donald Trump. Uh, at that point, I don't know whether Chris Hedges, like uh, Hambone Littletail, is is wavering a, a little bit on that. Uh, so anyway, obviously, it, it came up in the interview <clears throat> as it had to with an interview in an interview with an avowed socialist. Uh, you know, about this ridiculous joke of Kamala Harris uh, being a, 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 a socialist or a communist, which, of course, uh, Chris Hedges just absolutely laughed off uh, that anybody... Uh, who who thinks that that uh, Kamala Harris <coughs> uh, Kamala Harris is a socialist or a, a a communist is absolutely clueless that uh, that that anybody uh, j j just in the Democratic Party. Uh, kind of a, a, as, as that guy was saying in that comment to one of my recent rants, that the Democratic Party is no longer part of the left. Uh, although uh, Chris didn't say this, I, I, I would say that today's Democratic Party is, is a lot more closely aligned with probably the the Reagan Republican Party uh, that Kamala Harris is is probably closer to Ronald Reagan uh, than, than she is to JFK uh, but anyway so the the word that uh, that uh, Chris used to <clears throat> describe Kamala <coughs> is that she is a corporatist, was the word. He did not go as far a as I have calling Kamala a fascist. Now, he does label, uh, obviously, that Donald Trump is is clearly a fascist by anybody's definition that Donald Trump is is a through and through fascist and anybody who does not understand that Donald Trump is a fascist is every bit as clueless as anybody who thinks that Kamala Harris is a socialist uh <clears throat> And, and and I wish when I <coughs> hear all of these these words, these isms and ists being thrown around, that the people being interview, interviewed would define their terms. My my definition of a fascist is probably Chris Hedges' definition of a corporatist. My definition of a fascist. It is just any any politi from the po political 
standpoint that any politician who takes their marching orders from the global corporatocracy, the oligarchy, the donor class, whatever you want to call them, whenever a politician takes their marching orders from uh, the, the, you know, basically these planet-eating capitalist pigs, that they are a fascist. And uh, I guess Chris's definition of fascist is a little narrower, and I wish that he would just come out and define his terms. But anyway, but, but I'll go with that that uh, Kamala Harris is a corporatist. And he, he basically, he, I, I think the word he used for her was that she is a stuffed suit. That Kamala Harris is a stuffed suit who's been put up there by the donor class to, uh, you know, to march to their drumbeat. Uh, they have exactly who they want in there uh, when, uh, when they say shit. Uh, Kamala Harris squats. When they say jump, she says how high. That, uh, that Kamala Harris uh, and Donald Trump both are, are, are going just to go right on about uh, carrying the global corporatocracy oligarchy donor class company line that uh, the American empire, uh, while it is under threat, it's under absolutely zero threat uh, from Kamala Harris any more than it is uh, Donald Trump. Uh, they're, they're two peas out of the same pod. You know, what he, what, what he basically said about both of them, <clears throat> that both of them have absolutely no political ideology. Uh, the only thing that either one of these uh, joke candidates are are concerned about is their own personal you know their career advancement and their personal gain that uh, that e that either one of them are are going to flip flop uh, on any issue as soon as they think taking a, a position on whatever the issue is uh, has a better chance of advancing their personal gain and their career ambitions. Uh, they're not going to blink and, and change their public position. They, they don't give a fuck about any of this. Uh, they, they, they understand it, 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 it means nothing. He, he never called either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump stupid. Uh, they're just, uh, like, like any politician running for president. It's personal power, uh, gain, whatever, and it's just there, and it's just gonna be, uh, with Kamala, it's going to be just, you know, just four more years of uh, going back, although Chris didn't say it, I would say at least going back to 1980. Uh, just, uh, just where every succeeding administration uh, just uh, basically carries on the, uh, the, what the former administration was doing with a few little tweakings. But the, the bottom line is, is that nothing has changed. It, it, it's going to go right on along. If you want to know what four or 
God forbid, eight years of a Kamala Harris presidency uh, is going to look like. Well, just just look like, just look at uh, the past, I would say, 44 years and, and add four or eight to it. It, 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 it. Nothing is going to change. There is going to be no challenge, sure as shit, to the American empire. There's going to be no challenge to the uh, global corporatocracy. Uh, there's going to be no challenge to the collapse of everything. The collapse of everything is going to go right on uh, accelerating while all of these clueless morons are out there, you know, fighting like bugs in a jar over all of this distraction that doesn't mean a goddamn thing. There, there used to be a saying growing up where I grew up in the South uh, about how does this help me grow better tomatoes? And uh, I don't hear that expression much anymore. But uh, the, the, the comeback is when people were, were talking about something as irrelevant uh, as the election of 2024 on people's just regular daily lives and uh, the comeback uh, th that I've been using a lot is how does this help me grow better tomatoes? Wh which means what they're saying is uh, however this this little whatever that this little contrived uh, contest uh, uh, way out there uh, in, in the stratosphere turns out it has nothing to do on any level with me being able to grow better tomatoes. I'm growing goddamn good tomatoes uh, uh, under Joe Biden and I grow pretty damn good tomatoes under Donald Trump. Okay? A vote for Kamala Harris is not a vote for better tomatoes. Uh, it, it, it means absolutely nothing. Uh, I, I wish that the interviewer had talked about energy policy and stuff like that. So Chris didn't get into that, but the interviewer, uh, they, they did talk at length about Gaza and Israel and all of that. <clears throat> and uh, so Chris, uh, you, you know, certainly explained, you know, anybody uh, who thinks this election is going to have any bearing on the Israeli Gaza little kerfuffle, absolutely zero bearing on it zero bearing on it uh that kamala harris donald trump no difference are going to 100 percent uh support israel uh you know kamala making a few squeaks like she it, it, it ain't gonna happen uh the donor class uh, wants the U.S. to keep manufacturing and selling arms to Israel, and that's exactly what's going to keep on happening over the next four years. Uh, so if you're deluded about that, now, one thing that, that Chris said, and, and remember, guys, this was about six weeks ago, and, and, and Kamala was... Uh, what, what, what wasn't quite where she is today. I, I'm pretty sure I would need to replay this. I'm 95% sure that Chris Hedges, uh, when talking about Joe Biden, uh, has said exactly what I have been saying uh, for the past four years, that nobody voted for Joe Biden. That he just 
I'm pretty sure he said that. Uh, if anyone listens to that, please correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure, you know, he was pointing out that Joe Biden did not win the 2020 election. Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. Okay. Uh, that it had nothing to do with Joe Biden. Uh, there, nobody gave a fuck about Joe Biden, and he was reading this, uh, you know, right after Kamala was exactly how I was reading it, and and he says that there's going to be no change in this election. That nobody uh, with a brain is going to vote for Kamala Harris. That uh, if Kamala Harris does win this election, it's going just to be a repeat of four years ago. That Kamala Harris, if Kamala Harris ends up in the White House, it's not because she won the White House. It's because uh, Donald Trump lost the White House. And uh, I, uh, you know, right after uh, she was appointed <coughs> by... the donor class, uh, I, I was making uh, the, 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 the very same assertion that, uh, that Chris was making in this interview six weeks ago, uh, that I, I was making that very same assertion. Now, I don't know if Chris it would, would still say that to this day, but, but uh, uh, where I have changed a little bit on that, I do think there are a few people. Uh, I, I only, in my own life, I only know personally one human being who is calling themselves a Kamala Harris voter. I know one person... Uh, and you probably know who I'm talking about who has gone on record claiming they are voting for Kamala Harris. I mean, just in my own circle of friends and, re you know, real life friends, I have one friend uh, who has told me that they are voting for Kamala Harris. So I do think... A, a few people, I won't go as far as saying they're 100% voting for Kamala Harris, but at least there are a, a few people, and I would say the vast majority of those few people being women, uh, are, are killing two birds with one stone, where they can still vote against Donald Trump and vote for Don, uh, uh, Kamala Harris, you, you know, so it's kind of a split ticket. I'm halfway voting for Kamala, halfway voting for uh, Donald Trump, but I do, uh, I do, uh, agree with uh, Chris to this day uh, that Kamala Harris uh, going into the White House uh, has nothing to do with her winning the election any more than Joe Biden won the election four years ago is that Donald Trump lost and, uh, you know, Chris kind of brushed up against the subject, you know, well, well, that neither one of these jackasses, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, have any business any more than Joe Biden did being president 
of the United States. No business whatsoever that, that either one of these candidates have any business being in, in, in this race. And, and uh, that uh, Kamala Harris is an absolutely lightweight little gnat. Uh, the only reason, now, now Chris didn't say this, but I will agree with my, my Trumpist friend who is up here, who is claiming the only reason that Kamala Harris was ever put on the ticket with Joe Biden is, what, what is that little limp dick lefty uh, alphabet soup? Uh, you know, the inclusion thing, that good Lord with Kamala Harris, how many, how many boxes did Kamala tick off? She got woman, she got black, she got Indian, you know, you know what I'm saying, that, that uh, the only reason uh, that, that she was ever even put on the ticket was to get the little lefty woke vote that uh, there is nothing in that woman's resume uh, that, that should have her uh, running against Donald Trump. And, and if, it was, if it was a, quote, legitimate candidate uh, that the Republicans were running, they, they should have no problem swatting uh, this little lightweight, irritating little gnat uh, Kamala Harris, but uh, Donald Trump might be just the perfect candidate to, to lose to this little nobody gnat. Uh, now, now, Chris did agree uh, and, uh, with me and my Trumpist friend uh, and anybody else with a brain that all of this uh, th th this Kamala fever and, and, and all of this shit in the press, uh, you, you know that, that 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 what that that Kamala Harris is the new JFK. It's unadulterated horseshit. Uh, it, 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 the, the press is completely exaggerating. Uh, her popularity, that there's no fucking way that Kamala Harris uh, can be as popular a a a as the press. It is the corporate press, you know, understanding that uh, the donor class prefers v uh, French vanilla ice cream over vanilla ice cream that is pumping up uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, this little nobody stuffed suit, uh, corporatist, uh, little puppet uh, d d uh, of the global corporatocracy. Uh, it, 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 it's a joke. It, it's absolutely uh, just left-wing corporate uh, well, not left wing. Uh, I, I, even I am still slipping into that. Uh, it, 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 it's a joke uh, the way that they're kissing that woman's ass. Uh, but but so it was the if if you just want to have some uh, some Trump rant. Uh, fun. You did just go ahead and skip through to the final few minutes because most of the interview was centered, uh, you know, uh, it was a lot more centered on Kamala than it was on Trump. And uh, if anybody uh, listening to Chris Hedges uh, deservedly bash uh, Kamala Harris, uh, thinking on any level that Chris Hedges uh, meant that he supported Donald Trump, the last few minutes uh, will uh, disabuse you of that notion where uh, the avowed socialist uh, Chris Hedges, you know, sums up what a Donald Trump victory 
it, 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 it is going to look like. So Kamala Harris victory is going to be four more years of what we've been seeing, uh, you know, kind of even in Donald Trump's presidency. But, you know, he is saying if uh, Donald Trump gets back in, and uh, six weeks ago, he thought, as I say, he was giving the election to Trump, uh, that, that you understand it's not going to be 2016 all over again, that Donald Trump is, is going to sweep into the White House with an absolute ruthless, vindictive binge that uh, in addition to career advancement and personal gain, his entire focus is going to be seeking revenge uh, on anybody that he perceives uh, as his enemy. And that's pretty much uh, what, what, what did he say? He, he, he said, Donald Trump is going to take a while to get to people like me. It, it, it's it's going to take a while to, to, to get to little, little gnats like Chris Hedges and anybody else, you, you know, on that level of descent. But uh, it, he, he goes, it, it's going to be all out war. It's going to be all-out war against anything remaining of a free press uh, in, uh, in, in this country. That, uh, and, and then, uh, you, you know, he kind of, Chris Hedges kind of laughed off the, you know, the very notion that we do have a democracy left in this country, but any last little shreds. Of a uh, of a democracy, freedom of speech, constitutional rights, uh, the freedom of the press uh, to dissent uh, against uh, Donald Trump and and everything his fascist buddies stand for are going to be under direct assault. And, and that Donald Trump most certainly is a major threat to democracy as long as you understand, as uh, Hambone Littletail has been saying, that the very idea that we're uh, in a democracy is a fucking joke, but uh, to the level that we are, even those last remaining shreds will be under direct assault as a uh, as a dyed in the wool fascist uh, fascist demagogue narcissist hell bent on uh, on personal gain and revenge uh sweeps in for for four more years and anyway uh that's kind of my review but i give myself pretty high marks for uh understanding uh the 2024 election with 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 my minimal level of investigation into it. It's just, it's just, it's just no shit Sherlock uh, looking at the choice between Kamala Harris and, and Donald Trump. It makes no fucking difference. It's a fucking distraction. But go ahead and play the little dog and pony show game uh, while you still can. Uh, I'm, uh, I am sitting this one out. Anyway, have I procrastinated as long as I can, little dog, and you think of any more procrastination?
the battery light is blinking. I have been procrastinating for 45 minutes. So I'm going to get out here on this beautiful day and uh, get to work. Get out there and get her done while I still can. I have some tomatoes to pick. Bye, guys.